Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here today. I want to get right to it and start out with a confession. I want to confess something to you that I did not believe was possible, but that has actually happened. I have a part two to a dream, the dream that I posted a couple of days ago, the Gloria dream. My dad had a part two to that night before last. And I want to confess to you that when I hear and have heard of other people having quote unquote part two to dreams, I have been skeptical. Like, I am not sure God really does that, but I'm open to it. Well, when it happens to your family, then I'm like, oh, wow, God really does do this. I'm reminded I'm not God and his ways aren't my ways. <laughs> and he gonna, he's going to roll how he's going to roll. <laughs> and so I humbly accept that and confess that to you. So I want to begin with a prayer, and then I'll tell you the part two of the Gloria dream. Father, I come to you humbly asking you to speak through me. Guard my mouth that I will only speak what you want me to say. I pray that if anyone gets anything out of this, it comes from you and not me. May your Holy Spirit dwell mightily upon us and in us and through us, and let your love shine in our hearts. Thank you for the hope and the gift of your son, Jesus. In his name, amen. All right, part two of the Gloria dream. The Gloria dream, I believe I posted on July 30th, I would bet. It says Gloria at the end of it, so you'll be able to see it. Uh, here it goes. Part two of the Gloria dream. In this dream, my dad, he was dreaming other things, and then suddenly it was like he had just gotten back from his journey that was described in that first dream. And he was recovering. He was so tired. He was in the living room, and he was thirsty, so thirsty. And he wanted a Coca-Cola. Now, in the South, or where we live in Texas, when we call everything that's carbonated a Coke, uh, do you want a Coke? Yeah, what kind of Coke? A Sprite. That's kind of how we define Coke. But in this case, he actually wanted a Coca-Cola Coke. So he, he asked my mom, do we have any Coke? And she said no. And he said... Uh, I just don't, I, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I'm so thirsty. He got up and his legs were weak. And he went outside in the yard and there was a booth out there like a, you know how when you wait on a bus in the city, there's like a three walled protected booth. There was a bench inside this booth that looked like that and the walls were solid white he sat down on the bench, and he just thought, I, I don't feel good. I don't know why I'm so thirsty. And then suddenly, I mean suddenly, there was a whirlwind of dust, like a devil duster or a dust devil or dust nado, whatever you call them. And it just whirled up and kicked up the dust and blew over that, that place he was sitting it was full of trash, and it was full of dry, dry dirt. Everything was so dry. And at that moment, it blew through, calmed down, and my dad would just, the thought came to him, I'm dehydrated. No, no, no voice or anything. It was just a thought given to him is how he described it. I'm dehydrated from my trip to Gloria, and I need to drink something. So we went back in the house, sat on the couch. My mom came came in, and, and he said, I'm, I'd like a Coke. She said, well, we have one. And he said, I thought you said we didn't have any. And she said, well, I wasn't sure you really needed one, but we do. 
So she went and got him a Coke, a six ounce bottle of Coke, and he just drank it all in one gulp. He went into the kitchen. That's where he actually drank the Coke. He walked into the kitchen, drank the Coke in the kitchen, and then refilled the Coke bottle with faucet water. He went to the water, so to the sink, turned on the faucet, and drank a bottle of water. Then he filled the bottle again, drank that whole bottle of water, and filled it again, and drank that. So three times he refilled the Coke bottle and just guzzled the water, and he thought, I'll be okay now. I'll be okay. So he went into his bedroom, got on the mattress, the bed, and it was like a feather mattress, which is, it wasn't completely comfortable, but it wasn't uncomfortable, and he laid down and went to sleep. From this dream, this second part, and I don't know, maybe there's going to be a third part. I really don't know. I'm shocked, truly shocked, that there's a part two. I've heard Dana Coverstone talking about things like that. And truly, I do think a lot of his dreams have prophetic elements in them. But I did not think it would happen to us. And when my dad, who is very unassuming, yesterday morning said, I had a a part two to that Gloria dream. I said, well, let's have it. And I wrote it down. That's what I just read to you. The, the things that um, stuck out to him as the dreamer, which I think is important to take note of, is it was like desert. Everything was dry. Everything was parched, including his throat. But you don't have a devil duster or uh, whatever you call those. You don't have a, a, a whirlwind of dust without it being, without the dirt topsoil being dry. Right now, in our part of the country, there are four or five devil dusters on the horizon outside my window all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. So that dryness speaks something and means something. I think the fact that there were three walls around him that were white in that booth, I think probably represent Father, Son, and Spirit. I think that after the power of the wind, which is all, which is spirit, blew over him, he knew what the problem was. He was given the knowledge, I'm, dehy- I'm dehydrated. And he was also given the ability to solve the problem. So he went to the living room which is where we relax with family. And I think different rooms of the house house in dreams mean different things or can mean different things. In the living room, you know, that's where we rest. That's where we relax. When he went into the kitchen, the kitchen is where food is made to sustain us. And often, I believe when, when our dreams take place in the kitchen, It's an element of you will be sustained, you will be provided for, you will be fed spiritually or physically. So the fact that he drank those drinks in the kitchen is an element of hope. You're going to be provided for. And once again, water. In in the Bible, especially when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, I will give you living water and you will thirst no more. I'm wondering if that is tied into the stream, and he had three drinks of water, which three would be the Godhead, Father, Son, Spirit, the Trinity, that he is filled with that. We will be filled with that during the drought, during the dry time, during the the hard times that might be coming or might be here already. So those are the elements that I'm taking away from that. Once again, it's tied to Gloria, which is the presence of God, which is the manifestation of God, is what that word means. And in his dream, the first part, he had gone to Gloria, and there were children there, and I think that represented the children of God, the remnant. 
So that's all I have right now. I'll bring you more if there's more. Once again, go to the Spirit, go to the Father, and ask Him what this means, if it means anything, what the takeaway is, and how best you can prepare for what might be coming. All right. Y'all have a great day. Stay close to Jesus. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.